Welcome back, Brad and his big brain. What do you got for us today? Well, Chris, before we get to today's main story, I have a few loose ends to tie up okay. from last week. When we last spoke on Thursday, we were talking about NASA's latest spacecraft off to encounter another asteroid. It was supposed to launch last Thursday, weather delayed it. It did indeed launch on Friday. NASA has communications with it. For those of you who didn't see last Thursday's segment, it's going to explore this asteroid, which is believed to be a metallic body and it's somewhere between Mars and Jupiter. It's quite a voyage. It won't reach there until August 2029, so I suspect we won't be hearing much about it until then. But hey, in August of 2029, turn into Action 2 News at 430 because Chris and Brad will have the latest then. We will be here, won't we? Gosh, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, the other thing we were talking about, this annular solar eclipse, mm -hmm. which occurred Saturday. We had mentioned that it would be best viewed across the southwestern right. United States. Only about 40% of the sun would be covered by the moon here, but we had a problem. We had all of those clouds, Correct. okay? But I gave you this rundown as to when the eclipse would be occurring, and it was right at 1155, which was the maximum eclipse. Chris, it's like 10 to noon, and I'm looking outside, and it's like the skies are getting brighter. <laughs> the clouds are getting thinner. I grabbed the I camera. I should go get my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I should go get my camera, which I did, and I got a picture. Ah. I'll zoom in, and you can see Very nice. it was indeed visible through the clouds, at least for some of us here in northeastern Wisconsin. So that was the annular eclipse on did Saturday. Did you have your safety eclipse glasses on? Or? No, I didn't because you I just used looking through the camera. The view, the, not the viewfinder, but just the little LCD sure. screen. Yep. Okay. Okay, so the next Aster event is this coming weekend, the annual Orionid meteor shower, uh -huh. one of the best meteor showers of the year. We'll talk more about it this Thursday at 4.30, okay? okay? So hold that thought. All right. Now, on to today's main story. Da, 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 da. Flip of a coin, 50-50. It makes a lot of decisions, doesn't it? <laughs> it sure does. How fair is it? Oh. Because as it turns out, flip coins are found out to be not as fair as we have always thought. Way back in 2007, this man, way back, well, it was, it was, it was a while wow. ago. Careful. <laughs> Percy <laughs> Diaconis, he's a statistician and a mathematician at Stanford University. He then, in 2007, theorized that, you know, a coin that is flipped, the side that's facing up when you flip it, actually spends more time in the air, and therefore the odds are in the favor of it coming back down in the same position, whatever it is up when you flip it. Okay. That he says it's not a big chance. It's probably like one percent. Key word there was theorized. Correct. Okay. So you know scientists. Let's see if it's true, right? <laughs> so here was the experiment. They had 48 people flipping coins. They used 46 different minted coins from 46 countries to prevent a design bias. Sure. Okay. For a total of 350,757 coin flips. And what was the conclusion? They found that the coin landed on the same side up when it was launched 50.8% of the time. So about it's not 50-50. It's not. It's 49-51, it's but close enough, right, for all practical purposes. I wonder how our professor is now feeling about his theory. I'm pretty happy, I would think. Oh, okay. All right. 0.8% proves it. All right. right.